What is up folks, Casual Dad here with another Warhammer Combat Cards video. A couple things I wanted to talk about real quick. I have noticed some pretty significant changes here. Um, the biggest ones being, so we just saw in the patch notes, we had a, a debuff to a couple key warlords, especially ranged warlords and especially Tolmeron, the uh, Blood Angels warlord. Let's go ahead and pull him up. So his ability has changed a little bit to where every time you deploy a new card, uh, every friendly card gets that's already on the board gets a plus 20% bonus to its ranged attack stat permanently. That used to be 25%. They dropped it down by 5%. Um, but uh, one thing I've also noticed is traditionally, or <laughs> traditionally, whatever, up to now, when you play against a computer player, when you're playing in a ranked game and you play against a Tolmeron, basically every single time they would play their weakest cards first, especially usually a board full of Medicaid and Taunt when there's nothing else on the board. Um, and then they would hold their most powerful cards for later in the game. So they're really, really big planes. You usually see a basically full deck with one or two actually hard-hitting cards in it. Um, what I have seen more recently is now when playing against the AI, when it plays Tolmeron, it actually plays it differently, where it plays the more powerful, harder-hitting cards earlier, which makes that deck significantly more powerful to play against. Uh, and so I didn't, and this could be me just making this up. I'm, I'm thinking this. This is something I've noticed and wanted to be sure to mention. Um, it's happened in a couple games now. You don't see the same Warlord that often early in the season yet. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see if that keeps up. But uh, I couldn't help but wonder if that was something that the, the developers saw and were kind of thinking about when they did the slight debuff to Tolmeron's ability. Because that 5% isn't going to matter that much to people who actually play as him because it's still 20%. Uh, but if you're playing against him, that may be noticeable if you're seeing the AI play it a little bit more um, smartly, shall we say. Uh, and that was one of those Warlords that always really stood out as one that is a skill to play Warlord, where you have to play into the ability, just like um, Foldus, the one who does the same thing, but for Psychic Attacks. Um, and so it was always interesting that that was one of the easiest Warlords to beat, because the AI always played the decks a little bit backwards. So seeing them played correctly makes him a much more intimidating piece than he was before. So, And I'm looking out for that to see if any other decks are played that way. Uh, it's a little bit harder to tell if other decks are played that way because it's not quite as there's not quite such a strong theme to the deck and the ability all at once with most other warlords. So, but I'll keep an eye out. Uh, that was pretty cool. The big thing I really wanted to talk about though is the Warhammer Fest celebrations that start today. If you're watching this video, uh, so we've been going through the Battle Scars campaign, and I wanted to just show you kind of what I have lost. As you can see, I did not do. <laughs> so I hit. Um, I've been mostly playing with Vol, because she's kind of my favorite campaign warlord. Uh, but I started out with Greyfax, and then I did just jump to Greyfax when I hit level 28, just to try it. Um, and as you can see, I lost pretty dramatically. So uh, I really started out playing with Greyfax with a full deck. So I was getting the most copies of that free card possible, even though it was costing me some cards. So I was just throwing in kind of the cheapest chaff cards, and then a couple, maybe 20 some odd point cards that were decent, so I could carry through to the, to the victory in those early rounds. Of course, the early rounds are pretty easy, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, but as you can see, I've definitely lost quite a few cards, including, in later rounds, some of the more key pieces that I am certainly feeling the absence of now. <laughs> uh, I've still got some heavy hitters, so I'm going to play the last couple rounds, or at least a couple at this point, since there's only a few more hours left in that campaign. Um, but just wanted to go ahead and highlight that. But starting tomorrow, Friday, April 28th, if I'm reading the date correctly, we start seeing celebrations for um, Warhammer Fest. Warhammer Fest? Warhammer Fest, yes, which is an exciting thing at Games w, or GW, Games Workshop, that they do to celebrate the whole Warhammer franchise and community uh, in Nottingham in England. So there's going to be some in-person stuff that's going to be a lot of fun and very cool, and there will be an in-person presence of uh, Warhammer combat cards in their team. But also true to form, one of the things that I, keeps me in the game that I really appreciate is they also are going to do some digital content coinciding with the days of the event. So you've already seen these quests kind of pop up. So just to read this off, so starting on Friday the 28th, uh, you will be able to play a campaign as Roboot Gulaman, which is super fun. He's just a supercharged warlord who just gives you a bunch of passive readies and some passive bonuses to your card stats. So I do expect this to be pretty easy when we get in there, which will be awesome, because I would love to get more copies of Astarath. These also, it looks like we have four strikes to make it pretty lenient to go ahead and go through here, and the rewards are good. Um, and I imagine the packs will be very thematic. And also, I think it's one win to get, yeah, look at that. So it's a single win to get each victory. So there's going to be a lot of these campaigns back-to-back, -back, 
but usually it's two wins to get each of these stats, so this should be significantly um, faster, which is nice for those of us who don't have all that much time to play. And then in the follow-up, so let me see, actually, in this one you will only be able to run Blood Angels. So you'll be playing as Robot Guliman, but you can only use Blood Angel cards. So I also expect these packs to be very thematic on that. Yes, so I see Blood Angel cards. Awesome. So if you love Blood Angels, cool. Uh, then the next round, this one's going to add in where you can do Blood Angels and or Dark Angels. And then there's two more coming. So day three, uh, you're also going to be able to use Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and then um, Ultramarines. And there will be another set of rewards coming up, the War and the Warp. And then uh, from the 1st through the 3rd, 1st of May through the 3rd, so that's going to be early to middle of next week, you get to play as Scarbrand, where you do the counter campaign where you play Chaos against the Imperium. And this is cool. So starting with that, so this is day 4 of all of these events. Uh, and I'm reading this off on the blog, by the way. This is the developer blog, Celebrating Warhammer from CombatCards.com. Um, so just to go through it again, day one, Blood Angels only, playing as Gulamon. Day two, Blood Angels and um, Dark Angels, playing as Gulamon. Day three, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and Ultramarines. Day four, you play as Scarbrand. And on that first day, you can only use undivided units. Very thematic, I really like it. Day five, which is your second day with Scarbrand, uh, you can use undivided, and then you can also use corn cards, which is really going to open up what you can run. Day six you will be able to use demons keywords. So demons not just being undivided or corn, but just other demon types. Nice. And then the final day, I believe that is day six is the final day. So we're looking at going from uh, Friday, April 28th through day six. What is that going to be? I think that was May 3rd. Let me check the dates again. Yes. Okay. So April the 28th. Well, it doesn't have the dates all the way anyway, but it's six days long and starts today. So <laughs> that should kind of get you into the middle of next week. So this, let's see. So campaigns are exploration-based, so you get those strikes that we were just seeing. So you have to lose four games to get knocked out. Uh, and then each day there will be a free pack in the shop that will contain specific cards you can use as bodyguards for the day of the campaign, which for folks who've been playing for a long time, it'll just be extra copies, and that's nice. Always nice to see them, see them in theme. Um, for folks who are new, you should get some really good stuff to kind of fill out your collection and may get some you know, really good stuff you haven't seen before. So the, can't, the it'll probably be a random pack, but specific. So like these are just Blood Angels packs. Probably going to see that. Um, yeah, we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, and there'll be different reward tracks, which is awesome because that's a ton of rewards. You'll have 24 hours to complete each campaign when it starts. So they're, they're fairly quick. Usually we get three days for one of these, and this time we're going to get one. So play accordingly, uh, which is also a nice reason why it's so short. Why well, it's one win for each reward. OK, multiple modder files will be in place. Uh, even playing field, so all cards will be the same level. Special requisition, so you get extra size decks. Apocalypse, uh, I think that's you can only use cards above a certain price point, if I remember that correctly, which means that those packs that you're getting in the store will be even more valuable because they'll be high cost cards. Um, and Battle Forged for all six campaigns. And Battle Forged is it's only a specific pool of cards. And that's where they're saying already with the limitations and what you can play. Uh, and the last three having the Aura of Rage in place, which means that every single turn, each card that's on the board gets a flat buff to its um, melee attacks. So your longer, your more survivable cards will benefit more over the course of the game. And your melee cards are going to be kind of favored there, except they're going to be up against melee decks. So you may want to. Uh, <laughs> counter instead of playing into theme, but we'll see. Uh, also released two brand new cards on Friday and Monday, cool, which we will showcase tomorrow, Ooh, which will be today if you're watching this. Um, yeah, this is this is really cool. I really like this. So I'm pretty excited about that. I mean, maybe you'll be able to play all the campaigns, maybe you won't, maybe we'll get all the rewards, maybe you won't. Uh, it's a good idea to look ahead a couple days and see like, okay, I only have so much time to play. Do I want Astaroth or do I want uh, Belial, or do I even care about getting either of those? Do I just want to play a couple games and get some packs? For me personally, oh man, there's good stuff in here. There are some really powerful cards in each of these sub-factions, and getting packs that are specific to a sub-faction gives you a much better chance of getting multiple copies or uh, rare cards that can be hard to get copies for. So as much as I'm able to, I'm going to try to complete all of these, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, and that is all I wanted to talk about. So happy Warhammer Fest, and uh, yeah, happy gaming.